five things I wish I knew before weightlifting as a woman. So these are things that I've learned by myself while working out. I started going to the gym like a year ago, but I was never really constant. Like sometimes I went two times per week, others I didn't wear at all. I was also not paying attention to what I was eating, which is not good. I was eating whatever I wanted basically. <laughs> but now I am working out five days a week, I am counting my macros, I am eating properly, I'm super happy. So if you want to start going to the gym or if you already started, this video will help you out. Let's get into the video. Nutrition is key. Start counting your macros, carbs, protein and lipids. In case you don't know, carbs are for the energy, protein for muscle gain or fat loss and lipids for the hormonal system, well-being and pleasure. Like this one makes all foods delicious with sugar as well. For example, if you mix something that you don't like let's say some spinach, and then you add butter, the combination will be delicious, thanks to the butter, of course. So if you don't know how many macros do you need, you can look for an online macros calculator, and depending on your goal, your age, etc., you'll see a different result. I'm gonna share mine with you guys, just in case you want to have an idea. So I am currently 24 years old, my weight is 51 kilograms and my goal is to gain weight and build muscle. To achieve this, I am eating around 2000 kilocalories per day. I am a sedentary person because my job is working from home. And to counter this, I am going to the gym five times a week. So that is it. Obviously, you don't have to copy me because everyone is different and we all have different goals and body compositions. When you go to the gym and you do this super intense weight and strength training workouts, your body will need to refuel with protein. Protein intake is essential to increase muscle mass since the musculature is composed largely of protein. And if you are wondering, okay, but what foods have protein? Don't worry, I'm gonna give you some examples. My ultimate favorite source of protein are eggs because you can do so many different recipes with eggs and they are just simply delicious. Then you can also buy some tuna cans, Greek yogurt, chicken breast, steak, mozzarella, salmon, almonds, hazelnuts and a lot more. Okay, so I know at the beginning it can be very difficult to quit all the junk food you're eating but you don't have to do it instantly to quit all the junk food like this. You can start by quitting just one food and then another one, etc. And for example, if you really like chocolate like me and you can't live without it, what you can do is replace your favorite junk food with other healthy foods. What I did was I quit Nutella and I replaced it with chocolate protein spread and it's delicious. Another tip I can give you is that you can do the groceries at night, after you have dinner. Why? Because this way you will not be starving and having the necessity of picking junk food. You will certainly make better food choices. Point number two, consistency. So you're not gonna like working out in the beginning. Like, it is normal. You will see it as an obligation that requires a lot of time to see some results. I was there as well, but with time and consistency, you will see it as a lifestyle and not a punishment. Because you will see how many benefits it has. You will like it because of how good you feel after a workout. You will see how far you have come, how much you have improved. I used to be that girl that was extremely shy to go to the dumbbell section because there was always a lot of men around and I felt super insecure, like I never went there, honestly. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing, but not anymore. All of the fears we had will disappear, I promise. You will become stronger, not only physically, but mentally. Because you will get out of your comfort zone. Also, the more you do it, the more you will want to do it. Because you're not gonna think about the pain while training. You're just gonna do it because it will become an habit to you. Like brushing your teeth, for example. If we look at the biggest athletes, they are so confident in how they play and whatever they do. Why? Because they show up every day, they train and they know that they are doing is the best that they can because they have trained their whole life 
where they have developed this whole skill. These people have a lot of discipline. These people do not think about I feel like or I don't feel like. How you feel does not make you become a big professional, does not make you become a successful business manager. You want to have discipline, your feelings should be off. It's not about your feelings. Listen, you don't feel like going to the gym, but who feels like going to the gym? Actually, there are some people that enjoy going to the gym. After I walk out of the gym, I'm like, yeah, I did that. And I feel super confident about myself because I push myself to do things without thinking about them. I started going to the gym two times a week. And every time I create a new limit for myself, then I'm like, yeah, you can do more. I am going five times a week now. And listen, if after this you still struggle with going to the gym, you can look at my first video where I talk about how to have discipline to go to the gym. When you see the progress you've done, how far you have come, you will not want to stop. You can track your workouts as well. I use this app called Strong and you can see how many workouts you've done in the past month. And it just feels empowering to see your progress. Also, you can take some pictures of you, you can challenge yourself if it helps you. For example, you can take some pictures of yourself each day during 30 days with the same pose and at the end of the challenge, look at your fitness transformation. Point number three, skills mean nothing. Here's a little story time. So I personally weigh myself sometimes on the scale because my goal is to gain weight. My goal now is to gain around 5 kilograms. But who knows, maybe in some months I will achieve it and I will create another goal to myself. So I weighed myself one day and I thought, oh my god, I'm losing weight, like how is that possible? Because I saw my weight had diminished of one kilogram. And you know what? I'm gonna explain to you why scales means absolutely nothing. It's just a number. Here's what one kilogram of fat and muscle looks like. Incredible, right? Muscle is a denser t-shirt that takes up less room in our bodies than an equal weight of fat. That's why it's possible to lose inches but show no minimal changes in scale weight. Having more muscle means you have a more desirable body composition or fat to muscle ratio. You may still weigh the same but your body will look different, smaller, better and tighter. And muscle beats up your metabolism which in turn helps you to burn off more fat. So in my case, I probably lost some fat and gained muscle, so that's why scales mean nothing. What really matters is what's in the inside. Look at these pictures. I just found some random girl on the internet. Well, apparently she's a fitness model, but look at the difference on the weight. She gained more than 10 kilograms, that's insane. Look at this second picture. Both women have the same weight but a different body composition. That's why you don't have to obsess yourself with the scale. Like, trust me, what really matters is what you have in the inside. What percentage of body fat you have and what percentage of muscle mass you have. Point number four. Technique and form is more important than lifting heavier. How can you progress if you don't know if you're doing it good? I believe I was doing all the exercises with the correct form and after recording myself, I realized I was doing plenty of the exercises with a bad form. You will never progress if you are lifting heavy with a bad form, so please record yourself. You will also prevent some injuries like this, and of course it will help you to progress. And also, don't be embarrassed that people will look at you and judge you if you record yourself. Like, no one is looking at you. Everyone is focused on themselves. Don't stop forming yourself. You can watch fitness videos of people on the internet, read books about nutrition or whatever, buy your favorite influencers, online courses. Like, even the best fitness coaches are still learning each day, you know? Number five. This is the most important point for me because I can really tell the difference when I work out having my period and when I don't. I remember once I was in the gym, the first exercise that I was going to do was the lat pull-down machine. I did one rep and I felt like I wanted to cry so bad because I was feeling super sensitive that day that lifting something heavy and thinking that I was going to do more reps was making me want to cry. And I know a lot of people are going to think, oh my god, like you're so dramatic, but no, periods do really have a huge impact on our training. 
For me, when I'm on my period, it doesn't hurt a lot. It's more emotional, I would say. My humor changes a lot, I'm more sensitive. I, I just want to be in the sofa all day with a blanket, you know? And I also don't feel very energized. So here, my advice would be, one, if it hurts a lot, you feel like you're gonna die, don't push yourself super hard, okay? Just go for a gentle walk on the park to kind of move your body a little bit. On the other hand, if you're more like me, you don't have a lot of physical pain, but you feel like you can still go to the gym, it will be amazing if you have a special program for the days when you're on your period. A program that you don't have to live super heavy, that is more soft, of course. If you're on your period, it's very important to know what we should not eat. Don't drink alcohol, avoid sugar or caffeine. I know that what we want the most during our periods is to eat junk food. But believe me, you can find some replacements, like I explained it in the beginning of the video. Okay, so I did some research and I'm gonna explain to you really quickly what happens during this phase. During the menstrual period, the amount of sugar we have in our blood decreases. The way our body tries to compensate for this is by increasing our feeling of hunger. This creates the desire for fast-absorbing carbohydrates. We find sugars, processed pastries, pizzas, chocolate, ice cream. Filling ourselves with the refined sugars will quickly raise serotonin and glucose levels. This translates into an almost immediate feeling of tranquility and pleasure. However, this is the worst decision we can make because sugar levels will drop back to the minimum. So we will want to eat more sweets again and we will enter a loop effect. The solution to this anxiety lies in slow-release carbohydrates. And it is very important that we recognize what we should not eat during our period. Because if we get carried away by what the body wants, we can end up suffering from weight gain during this time. So that is it for the video guys. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Bye! Use some marijuana.